Today on Let Them Talk TV, we're going to look at the Irish accent. Who speaks it? How to speak it? What varieties there are? And also we'll take a deep dive into the history of languages in Ireland. And to guide me on this linguistic journey, I have all the way from County Wicklow, Phelim. Hello, Phelim. How are you? Top of the morning to you. Nobody says that to <laughs> no, you. No, nobody no. says that. No, no, nobody says that. One. Nobody says that. No. How are you getting on? It's quite good. Okay, okay. This top of the morning is like from Hollywood films in yeah. the 1940s. John Wayne, The Quiet John Man, Maureen right? O'Hara, that what? type of stuff. <laughs> Okay. Point number one, never say tough for the morning to you. I have some questions for you. Mm. First of all, who are you? Where are you from? And could you describe uh, your accent to us a little bit and how it compares to other Irish accents? Mm. Right, so uh, my name's Phelan. I'm from Arklow, County Wicklow. So that's a small town on the east coast of Ireland, about an hour south of Dublin. So uh, I don't see Dublin every day. I'm far enough away from it, but I'm close enough to hate it. Uh, <laughs> my accent is not very typical for where I'm from. It's maybe Dublin influences, countryside influences. So maybe a bit of both. So there are, okay, stop you a minute. There are a lot of accents in Ireland, mm. English accents in Ireland, aren't there? Loads, yeah. Okay. Um, less than, I think, in the past 20 years, they've become more uh, melded together. But, um, yeah, each county probably has distinct okay. parts in its accent. So you say. could recognise someone from uh, Cork or Shannon. Oh, yeah. Belfast. Oh, yeah. A different yeah. Yeah. Belfast, part. super different. Cork, yeah. I could recognise someone, whether they're from Dublin, Cork, Limerick, Galway. Okay. Uh, Wexford as well. And during my research, they say there's m even more than one accent in Dublin itself. Oh, yeah. The two main ones, really, is that sort of north and south divide. A north Dublin, more working class kind of accent, and south Dublin, more of a kind of sort of a middle to upper mm -hmm. class mm -hmm. kind of accent. Okay. I know that they speak English in Ireland, which, according to the Wikipedia page, mm. is called Hiberno-English. Mm. I guess that's to distinguish it from the Irish language. Mm. Now, there are several languages on the island mm. of Ireland. I'm saying the island mm. of Ireland to include. Mm. It's, it's not exactly the same as mm. Ireland, because mm. Ireland includes the northern part, mm. which is yeah, still little slice. Owned, <laughs> owned by the British. We'll go into the history yeah. of that another yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but could you elaborate on that a little bit? So, of course, we speak some English. Um, that's the rumour. Yeah, that's what they say. Uh, of course, there's the Irish. The word for it is, in Irish, is Gaelga. There's a little bit of that spoken. That's mainly in the West. It's a language maybe on a bit of life support, you could say. If I go into a pub in the West of Ireland, mm. what are the chances that I'd hear someone having a conversation? Your best chances of hearing Irish being spoken as sort of a living language the farther west you go, like okay. go as far west as you can, I'm talking okay. like okay. out to the Aran Islands and Inishman and places like mm -hmm. that, you might see some, uh, the older the people, the better the chance that they speak Irish. Okay, okay, but don't, don't you learn it at school? Yeah, begrudgingly. It's taught in school, every single school in the Republic, they teach Irish as a mandatory subject, but um, it's either, either Irish teenagers are lazy, or it's not taught very well, or it's a combination but really nobody speaks all that much Irish. However, there is, in Irish, there's also a system called the Gwail School, which is the Irish schools. So the Irish school curriculum is taught actually in Irish. So maths, oh, really? English, Irish, all the subjects are taught in Irish. And they're actually the best schools in the country. So if but you that's a minority thing. That's a minority thing, yeah. Yeah, that's a minority thing, as far as I'm most... Most students, I did anyway. I never went to a Gwail school, but some of my friends did. Oh, and so they would speak some Irish. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. I, I know you say you, you don't speak Irish, but I know that in Ireland they use a lot of words from mm. uh, Irish, the Irish language, in English. The only one I know really is because I think it's, it's travelled across the world. Uh, outside of Ireland itself is the crack. Yeah. How's the crack? That yeah. one I know. But there are many yeah. more that you use yeah. in Ireland. Don't you? Could yeah. you give a few examples? Well, you have what's the crack, of course. 
And by the way, it's... crack, just for those people who aren't familiar, it's like C R A I C, yeah, isn't that's it? it? It's yeah. nothing to do with it, yes. crack, as in yeah. something which is cut up a bit. The other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, nothing to do I with that. I wasn't thinking about it. No, nothing to do with that. Uh, and you, normally, when someone, especially from maybe England or Ireland, says, let's go to the pub and have a crack, it's the wrong, it's the oh, crack, the, the, def- crack. the definite. Article. article. Okay. It's enough. not the indefinite article. No, the no. crack. Everyone knows about the crack. Mm-hmm. There's only there's only one of them. There's only one of them. The the energy of the crack. Okay. Then we Noted. have examples. Other common stuff you'll hear is you might hear Gansey referring to jumper. Gansey. Yeah, Gansey. It's cold out. Put on your Gansey. Yeah. Where'd nice. you get that nice new Gansey? Oh, your nice. Gruig. Your hair. Gruig. Gruig. Your hair. Yeah. So I said, hey Phelan, cut your gru- Gruig. Yeah. And cr- get a new Gansey. Yeah. Yeah, you look terrible. You need you need to cut your groove. We can get a new Gansey. Colleen for girl. Colleen. Your, Colleen. Yeah. Colleen. So Colleen. Uh, you're meeting your Colleen. Mm. Cut your groove and get a new Gansey yeah. if you want to meet a nice Colleen. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, <laughs> definitely helps. Yeah. Or would you say to the Colleen, Colleen, hello, you're a nice Colleen. You're a nice. You're a nice young Colleen. Ah, uh, you might get a smack if you say something <laughs> like that. But yeah, okay. you could try it. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So, maybe not. Uh, apart from Irish, there mm. are other languages mm. on the island of Ireland, mm. aren't there? Mm. Uh, English, Irish, and then it's up for debate whether they're actually distinct languages or dialects or, or pigeons or the other words that you have for that type of thing. There's Scots up in the north, which I'll admit I know nothing, mm-hmm. literally nothing about. Mm-hmm. And then there's the sort of the traveller dialect language called, uh, the linguistic term is Shelta. Apparently it's called by travellers gammon or gammel. Uh, it's sort of a lot of Irish words on top of the English grammatical structure. Also, Polish. Polish, of course, yeah. yeah plenty Polish, Lithuanian, loads. I have done my research. 2.5% mm. of people in Ireland speak Polish as a first language. Yeah, as first language, yeah. More mm. people than speak Irish as a second language, probably. <laughs> Definitely as a first language, anyway. Yeah, that's, 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 that's for sure. That's interesting. A few general questions, and I'm curious about Ireland. When I was a kid, a long time ago, Ireland was considered a poor place. Oh, yeah. Lots of Irish people came over to mm. England, yep. to London, and yep. I'm sure America, yep. elsewhere, yep. because Ireland was so bloody poor, mm. there's no reason to stay there. If you were young mm. and ambitious, you mm. left Ireland. Yep. But now... According to the stats, mm. Ireland's the richest or one of the richest places in the world. Yeah. Firstly, is that true? Mm. And secondly, it's definitely got richer. That much we could, could agree on. Yeah. But what happened to make it so rich? Well, I'd definitely say Ireland is richer than it was in in even the 90s. Uh, it's classic, you know, rich people, rich, rich country, poor people. So even though a lot of that money is centered in Dublin as well, and a lot of it is from American corporations who have their headquarters in Dublin. So the GDP that they, the money that they pull in is kind of counted in the Irish GDP. So it kind of inflates the figures a lot. So it doesn't really represent the actual quality of life mm-hmm. in Ireland as mm-hmm. a whole. So if it's one of the richest countries in the world, I would say that may be true, but it's, it's, uh, it's paper tiger, really. It's not very true. It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't reflect how people actually live in Ireland okay. and the quality of the infrastructure okay. in Ireland. I, I should say from a personal point of view because I I haven't been to Ireland, but I'm mm. going soon. I'm going mm. in the summer, mm. and I was looking at, to book some hotels in Dublin. Unbelievable! I can believe it. It's oh more God. expensive, much more expensive mm. than London. Mm. London has a reputation of being expensive, mm. but you can get reasonably priced hotels. But mm. Dublin. Dublin is extraordinary. Insane. Dublin is insane. Yeah. You could you could go to any other city, beautiful cities by the Mediterranean, blue sparkling seas, delicious food, everything. You can go there and spend less than you could go to Dublin and sit inside in a stuffy pub with a load of old men. Uh, don't put me. I'm choking, looking for choking no, down. No, don't listen to him. Don't, down, listen, don't listen to him. I absolutely love Dublin. Dublin is a wonderful place, and I'm going to go there. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm sure. <laughs> You want to hear something sure. about Ireland, don't ask me. <laughs> I'm sure there's some great stuff there. Ah, yeah. Look. I'm sure I'll have a great time. You'll pay for it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be cheap. Well, fair enough. <laughs> you, you've already kind of answered my next one. Mm. Uh, there's a cliche that 
Irish people spend half their lives in pubs drinking mm. too much beer and playing yeah. music. Yeah. Any truth to that uh, cliché? That's one of my hobbies, <laughs> to be honest, yeah, in the pub. Maybe not drinking to excess, so I'm fairly pedestrian in my, in my drinking habits. But playing music, for sure, yeah. yeah. We have, yeah. Uh, it's a culture in Ireland, I've seen it. I've seen it in my travels around Europe, which are quite small as well. Around Ireland, in England and in France, uh, in Irish culture, there's something called a session, which is the idea of this is that on a weekly or bi-weekly or even monthly basis... There will be, on, say, the first Sunday of the month mm-hmm. at 7 o'clock, a lot of amateur musicians will gather in the pub together and, of course, drink. And they'll play music together. And so there'll be a lot of the Irish folk tunes that a lot of these musicians will have learned independently. And then they'll come together in the pub and play it, play these songs together and play songs in sets. So you get tin whistle players, flute players, banjo players guitarists, I play guitar, um, fiddlers as well, and baron players, me again, and then something called the Illin Pipe. But you write songs, you play the guitar, and you play the broad The baron as well. Another cliche, always rains in Ireland, is that true? Mostly sideways, yeah. Mostly sideways, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's true actually. Yeah, yeah, it's very true, very rainy, especially uh, the further out west you go, the rainier and the windier it gets. I'm I'm called from get this the sunny southeast. Sunny southeast. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's the least rainy part of the country. A couple more questions. If I were, which I am to an extent, if I were mm. to go to Ireland mm. for a holiday, mm. where would you recommend? I would recommend to fly into Shannon Airport if possible. Mm. Avoid Dublin entirely. This is just my opinion. I mean, familiarity breeds contempt. Maybe some people like to go to Dublin and they think that's grand. I think it's terrible. So I would recommend flying to Shannon Airport and either stick around the west coast and the countryside, little towns. And you get like places like Dingle and stuff is very famous for the music. So it was Galway, Galway. You go to like the Spanish Quarter, little streets, little comfy pubs with fireplaces and their own cat. Mm. Kerry, the lakes and stuff like that. And Just one final question mm. before we move on to the phonetics. Irish food. There is, is typical there, dishes. Is there, is there such a thing? <laughs> but there must be something new. Because you, you, yeah, uh, Phelim like, lives in Paris. <laughs> That's how I know. Lives in Paris. But is there some Irish food that you miss? Uh, I miss soda bread, actually. I miss mm. soda bread quite a bit. But and what do you put on it? Well, you just eat it with everything. Butter. You eat it with your Irish You put butter stew on it. Or you dip it into stew. You dip it into soup. You okay. put butter on it, you eat it as is, you have it with your fry. Lovely. I do I do miss that, actually. Right, now we're going to look at the phonetics. How to speak with an Irish accent. One, the TH stopping. Where the TH sounds like a T or a D, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah. tin and thin sound the same. Yeah, the, true? the tin, tin roof. Yeah, pretty much. The TH can sound like a, like for thin. I need, I need to make efforts to make that sound thin. I usually tin. So if something is tick or tin. And so all the TH sounds like think, think. and... What do you think about that thing? And these. Yeah, these. That's a D. That. You say that. That instead of that's that. A D, that's a D, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so so um, D or T, depending if it's a, a voice TH or an unvoiced TH, is it? The... Uh, I'm not sure of the correlation between voiced and unvoiced, but possibly, yeah. Okay, all right. So uh, I've got a sentence here. Mm. I'm going to read it in my uh, lovely best... Your, your best English. Queen's technical language. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I think there are 33 trees in the park. I think there are 33 trees in the park. Now you try. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's move on. The next one is a penthesis. Yeah. <laughs> this is a linguistic term, yeah, which I only discovered, yeah, yeah, yeah. I only discovered while doing the research for this. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of it in my life. A penthesis, if I may yeah. explain, yeah. The, tech, the, the linguistic side, is when you add 
mm. a vowel sound mm. that isn't there between two consonants. Mm. Uh, maybe I've got this bit mm. wrong. I'm not a phonetician. Mm. But like film, you say... Film. I will usually say film, but I think it's more common in North Dublin is you'll hear people say film, girl, stuff like that. I um, usually don't say. Known? No one? No one. Yeah, I think that one, like, no one. That's kind of a North Dublin kind of thing again. So you don't have Not that? Really, you don't no, appendicize? No. no, sometimes a film. 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 Yeah. Well, I've got a sentence here. Either you can do it in your own accent and there's going to be, mm. you won't have the appendices, mm. or you can exaggerate a bit. Mm. I'll leave it to you to decide. Mm. Why not the, <laughs> the girl in the film alone on the phone had a burn on her arm. Okay, so the girl in the film alone on the phone had a burn on her arm. The girl alone in the film on the phone had a burn on her arm. Oh, you wouldn't you say it that you? way, but yeah. You Some okay. people might. But that, that's that's good to know. So there are so enormous variety mm. of accents in in Ireland, as yep. we've already uh, established. Okay, but this, this I believe is common to all parts of Ireland, and that is roticity. Roticity. Chicken? <laughs> roticity chicken is when you pronounce the R's. Yeah. Because in yeah. in my accent, I don't pronounce the R's unless there is followed by a vowel. Mm. So I say mother. Yeah. Um, no. and mother. Mother. Okay, we'll come on to the other other yeah. vowels. So, so yeah. you say yeah. it again? Mother. Mother. Me mother. Me mother. Me mother. Um it's difficult for me to say. Okay. Uh, a car. A car. Okay. So this is true across Ireland, mm, isn't it? Yeah, well, true with everyone I've met. Okay. <laughs> okay. I haven't been to the whole country, but true with everyone I've met. Bird? Bird, yeah. Okay, the sentence I've got for you. Mm. Share this with you. Her mother's car murdered Peter's bird in Ireland. Her mother's car murdered Peter's bird in Ireland. You did that very well. Yeah, there's lots of, lots of those R sounds. Though. The A sound in words like dance, I say dance, mm. Mm. is like an ah mm. in the Irish accent. So I say bath, yeah. calm, yeah. alarm, farm, path, last. Yeah, yeah I would say car. Bad alarm, calm, past. Okay. It's interesting that this is interesting, closer to the American accent. Yeah, so way of speaking, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. We're kind of in the middle between yeah. a rock and a hard place, so to speak. <laughs> um, so the sentence I have, in my fine British accent, I danced past my father on the path. I danced past my father on the path. You say me instead of my. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes well, we might say that. I think yeah. you might say that in 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 yeah in, yeah, in, in me London. You might say that. Yeah. Ah, me arm. Me mate. Yeah. Me mate. The T sound in the middle and at the end of the words is pronounced as this is the the technical term a flapped R. So I say in my accent, uh, better, pretty, little, butter. Okay, but in Irish. It's not the T. Sort of a soft T. Yeah, better. Better. Butter. Better, but butter, pretty little. Better, butter, pretty little. Do I sound good? Soft like a Connemara shower. It's lovely. <laughs> uh, all right, this is my sentence anyway. Mm. I'm going to do it. In, I'm not going to do it in an Irish accent. I'll leave that to you. A little bit of better butter is pretty grand. That's a little bit of better butter is pretty grand. I love that. It sounds yeah. nice though. <laughs> yeah, it's so sing-songy lovely. Sing-songy lovely uh, uh, tea sounds, yeah. It's tea, but it's not a tea. Right. Um, also, the tea at the end of the word, also it's much softer mm. than the English tea. Right, fight, light, start, wait. Okay, is that yeah. right? Yeah, right, fight, light, start, wait. I'm going to try and copy you. Right, fight, 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 fight. You're sort of blowing a little bit of air out. Your fight, fight. No, I fight. It. They they haven't come to listen to me doing an yeah. Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> I've come to an Irishman doing an Irish accent. So not 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 a not a Londoner. Okay. Um, so the sentence I have, anyway, 
I started to wait for the right light on the flight. I started to wait for the right light on the flight. But there, because there's a lot of them in sequence, I might start using the glottal stop then as well, because it's a bit easier. Okay. So I might start... Uh, I started to wait for the right light on the flight. If I'm speaking a little bit quicker. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. So sometimes you've got a glottal stop. Yeah, sometimes. Okay. Now, next to the ing words, words ending in ing, sometimes the g isn't pronounced. Mm. Like I say running, sitting, getting. What about you? It depends on the same with the last thing. It depends on the speed. If I'm talking nice and slowly like this, but if I'm talking quickly, I'll take out the g. All right. So it depends on the speed. Okay, well, well let's see in, in the sentence, because I have, she was running, singing, and laughing. She was running, singing, and laughing, but she was also running, sitting, and laughing. Running, sitting, and laughing. Mm -hmm. Next, the I can be pronounced as, like, oi. Mm. Oi am. Uh, nice, noise, rice, five, like, time, lime, crime. Yeah, I would like five pounds of rice. Okay, well, that, that's interesting because this is one I can do mm. because uh, in Cockney accent, that's the same. Mm. Noise, yeah. noise, yeah. five. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it could be because I was wondering if it's because there are so many Irish people in the East End of London that it Possible. Uh, influenced the Cockney accent because mm. that's the one thing we have in mm. uh, common. So the sentence I have, well, you've given a sentence, we'll do one more. I think it's nice to have five like that. I think it's nice to have five like that. Okay. Excellent. Next one, love, dove, mother, rough, shove, bus. Love. Yeah, love, dove, mother, tough, rove. So shove. it's a different, so, so you have the ah sound, you have the oh, mm. so that's a difference. Yeah. Although that could be in the north of England. Uh, it's quite similar to yeah, that, I'm isn't saying, it? Yeah. North of England, yeah. So the sentence I have, my tough mother sometimes loves the bus. My tough mother sometimes loves the bus. Yeah. Doesn't she make loves, any sense. She loves the bus, she does. Okay, she does. We'll yeah. come on to the grammar yeah. in a second. Yeah. So we're going, we'll do, we've got a bit, little bit of uh, Irish grammar as well in, in a moment. Uh, let's just finish this one. One more. The Irish O... Stone, home, bone, roam, road, in my accent, my English accent. Uh, how would you say those? I say stone, home, bone, roam, road. So I took the stone road to my home in Rome. So I took the stone road to my home in Rome. Okay, it's a little different, isn't it? Slightly, I think. Okay, so with the pronunciation, I mean, it's clear the Irish accent sounds more sing-song. I've heard English, that, yeah. it's more musical. I've heard that, yeah. It links into the music, so the love mm. of music. Possible, yeah. 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 Possible. I know in Ireland, um, you would hear the accents are kind of less sing-songy in uh, Dublin and sort of uh, maybe Limerick, but I haven't spent a lot of time there, to be to be honest. Uh, it's more sing-songy accents the further south and the further west you'll get. You could talk to a man from Cork. He could be a big, hulking, threatening man with hands like shovels and he'll have a beautiful sing-songy soft voice nice or awesome. noise or noise as you should <laughs> say yeah. so now you know how to speak with an irish accent but there's more what about the vocabulary are there any typical words or expressions that we should use mm. when visiting ireland yeah. well we all know to look for the crack and then a nice descriptive word is if you want to describe something that's either great, mediocre, bad, but not bad enough to, to say it's terrible, you could describe it as grand. Grand. How are you? Grand, so, yeah. Nice. Grand. That's grand. Ah, nice. oh, yeah, me, me dinner. How's your dinner? Ah, oh, yeah, grand. You went on holidays to Croatia. How was that? Grand. Grand? Yeah, grand. That's interesting. That sounds like very old-fashioned. Uh, mm, possibly. To yeah. read it in Dickens and things. So. Yeah, grand. Yeah. Anything else? Vocabulary. I mean, you have your classic Jesus. Jesus. You know, Jesus. But okay. as an expletive, you stub your toe and you say, Jesus. Okay. I read one, Fierce. Fierce, yeah. Is that, is that right? Um, when I was doing the research? Fierce. You could describe something as fierce good. Fierce say, good. I got a new car very fast. Fierce fast. Very good. Mm -hmm. Or you could say that the weather is fierce. 
you think the weather is fierce it's it's frightfully stormy outside but not true uh, oh, so it's fierce. a good thing fierce, it's, a good fierce, thing. Yeah, it's, it's fierce a beautiful out, day it's fierce outside right now ah, okay. which is a good thing and if it's soft then it's sort of overcast grey rainy so drizzly. soft soft overcast grey and drizzly okay stay inside fierce get your get your barbecue well, you told me one as well, uh, yolk. Yo, the very important yolk. So yolk, Y O K E, spelled differently from the from the thing you find in from the yolk you find in the egg. Could refers to any object. So hand me that yolk over there. Which yolk? That yolk. That oh. yolk. Can you use it for people? Yeah, you can describe someone as a yolk, but it's not a very nice way to describe someone. You could say I met my uh, my history teacher. She's a horrible yoke. Ooh, yeah. doesn't sound nice. No, not really. Okay. We have banjaxed to describe something as if something is broken, totally broken, banjaxed, completely banjaxed. Or last night I was hitting the vodka and I got totally banjaxed. Oh, is that true, or are you just give an example? No, just an example. No. Okay. Okay. As I said, me drinking habits are quite pedestrian. <laughs> okay. Not finished yet. Got the grammar, because there are some small differences between mm. the grammar of Irish English mm. and British English, American English, other forms of English. And actually, in a previous video I made called How the Celts Change the English Language, do watch it if you haven't seen it already. I read a book uh, called Our Magnificent Bastard Tongue, by John McWhorter, and uh, he goes into great detail about how the Celtic languages have influenced the English language, and mm. this is more pronounced in Irish English. And he gives two examples. One is the use of do. The, he calls it the meaningless do, that a do goes into the word mm. and it has no meaning at all. It's just, it's just stuck there. Is this right? Yeah, I mean, with do, it's uh, I do be in the pub. I do Would, be playing music. So I do be in the pub yeah. has no sort of linguistic value to do there. I'm in the pub. Yeah. Could be, you could say that. Yeah, yeah. But they're equally just, as correct. But they're tr literally translating mm. from Gaelic. I think so. I've heard that So before. I do be in the pub. I do be in the pub. I do be playing guitar. So I could say we do be making a video. We do be making a video. We do be making videos. Sort of that habitual present tense as uh, something that happens regularly. Okay. Uh, Gideon does be making videos. Okay. Yeah, that's the other thing, the, the, the present continuous. Mm. Well, we might use... Um, Gideon makes videos. Yeah. And you're using the continuous. The Gideon do be making... Gideon does be making Gideon videos. Do. <laughs> Gideon does be making videos. Gideon does be making videos. So you want to go that extra step, you say, Gideon does be making videos. So he does. So he does. Yeah. So another example of that. So it it you you do be s s playing the guitar. I do be playing the guitar. I do be playing the baritone. So you as do. Well. Yeah. So I do. Yeah. I do be doing that. Yeah. Okay. That's a common thing. Is uh, I've heard before as lads, you'll hear that being called the doobie doos. The doobie doos. The doobie doos. Yeah, I do be doing, and you apparently you can get stick over that in school. To get stick, to get uh, a hard time, uh, okay. you get stick over. It. Okay. Can I say I do be understanding you? Yeah, yeah, you can say okay. that. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. So there you yeah. go. So the use of the the meaningless do and the pre present continuous. Yeah. Uh, also, I've got here. I didn't. I've heard this before. I didn't really understand it though. Use after. To mean just. Yeah, yeah. Have you taken out the bins? I'm after doing it. Have you taken out the bins? Yeah. I'm after doing it. I'm means I'm do I've, doing I've just it. done it. Yeah, I've just done it. Okay, can you give another example? Hmm. Have you cooked the dinner? Yeah, I'm after already doing that. Okay. I'm after yeah. already doing it. I mean, I've, I've just finished yeah. cooking. I've just, I've just done it. Okay. Yeah, can you, can you bring me that yolk from your house? I'm after going to the shops. Okay. To get the messages. Excellent. Excellent. Mm. The messages. Yeah, the messages, yeah. yeah. That means... So, my grandmother will ask me, Phelan, will you go out and get the messages? And I think, oh, I'll go to the post office and I'll get her a few envelopes. Who's sending my nanny letters? And she tells me what the messages is. 
which is in fact to go to the shop and to get milk, butter, bread, say hello to Pat. I thought the messages. Yeah, yeah, possibly, yeah. So the um, the messages means errands. Do the yeah, errands. Yeah, pretty much. Do the errands. Get the messages. Get the messages. So yeah. okay. Yeah, he does be going out to get the messages. He does be going out to get the messages. In English, English, you have you and you. You is one person. You is a hundred people. In our in Irish English, you have this second person plural where you means just you. But right now, I'm talking to ye out there, which is several people. Could be ye, yes, or you is. Is yeah. that regional? That difference? is regional, yeah. So, so in your Cork, accent? in my accent, I'm closer to hearing yes or yous, but I always associated with that with the unsavory types in Dublin. So <laughs> I sort of distanced myself from that and went with the unsavory types in normally Cork who say ye. 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 So I could say, what are ye looking at? Yeah, what are ye looking at? Okay, talking Five to lads several looking people. At you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or yous, or yes, and you was has some of that appendices you were talking about. Ah. Yous, or you was. You was. You was, yeah. Okay. What are you was doing over there? So that, there's grammar. Not quite finished because now we have, finally, we're putting it all together and we've got some typical Irish expressions. <laughs> Testament on the next g- holiday. Uh, just to show the contrast... I'm going to read them in my uh, bland English accent and Phelan is going to read them correctly in his Irish correctly. accent. Correctly. Colourful, lovely accent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ah, it's a grand day for a walk along the Dingle Way, so it is. Ah, it's a grand day for a walk along the Wicklow Way, so it is. Now we've gone from Dingle to Wicklow. That's fine. It's a long walk. <laughs> That's fine. I'm after showing you how deadly I do be playing the Bodran. Do you know what I mean? I'm after showing you how deadly I do be playing the Bodran. Do you know what I mean? I'm going out on the gargle. I won't be back for a few days. I'm going out on the gargle. Won't be back for a few days. Don't be worrying. A night on the lash in Wicklow is always a good crack. Don't be worrying. A night on the lash out in Wicklow is always good crack. Ah, here. You f***ing idiot. <laughs> but God loves you. Ah, here. You're a f***ing idiot. But God love you. I was down in the pub... With my old fellow for a few scoops. I was down in the pub with me alfala for a few scoops. I've never made balm brack before, but I thought I'd give it a lash. I've never made balm brack before, but I thought I'd give it a lash. This Colleen I'm seeing is awful gorgeous. This Colleen I do be seeing is awful gorgeous. After walking along the cliffs of... Mohair, I was pure banjaxed. After walking along the cliffs of Mohair, I was pure banjaxed. Okay. That one, pure banjaxed. Pure? Mm. Not pure. Oh, uh, both. Okay. If you want that emphasis, you're pure banjaxed. Pure banjaxed, okay. Phelan, we'd better stop this video now. Before it goes arse ways. That horse has bolted. <laughs> we better stop <laughs> this before it goes arse ways. Well, there you have it. Now go out onto the, I don't know, get a, get a cheap flight to Ireland and speak some yeah. Hiberno English. Yeah, Thank you to Phelan for joining us. Thanks for having me. And uh, see you in the next video. Bye.